So in our last video, we started looking at the Google Data Studio, but we looked at using templates that already exist. In this video, we're going to look at how you can create your own custom reports from scratch using your Google Analytics data, but actually accessing some more powerful tools from a reporting perspective. So let's have a look. So in the video from the last part of this series, we looked at how you can use Google Data Studio and come into one of these templates that are provided and then go ahead and link it to your own Google Analytics data. So what we're going to do in this video is start with a blank report instead. So we're logged into Google Data Studio, so datastudio.google.com and I'm going to click on the blank report to start from scratch. So once we've done that, we still need to go ahead and connect to the data. So we can either go ahead and use one of these connectors for specifically this one, we'll be using Google Analytics, but we could connect. Or if you've already connected because you did the previous one, then you can go ahead and you can select your data source that you've previously connected to. So again, in the last one, I suggested renaming your data sources so it's obvious you know exactly which one you're connecting to. So I want the Megan V. Walker All Data. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I'm about to add this to report. You'll see that. It we do have the option to say don't show it again, so you can always tick that and then do add to report. Now, as soon as we've done that, it's going to go ahead and add a sort of widget for you automatically. So this has actually added a chart or a table for us. I'm not going to do anything with this just yet. We'll come back to it. A couple of things I'm going to do. First of all is I'm going to give it a title. So I'm going to say website data uh, country uh, now let's call it location overview. All right, so I've given it a title. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these buttons here and we can see there's one, if I hover my mouse, it says image and we can either upload from a computer or we can do this by a URL. So we're going to go ahead and we'll pull in an image and um, very easy, it's drag and drop. So I'm just basically selecting it, clicking it, dragging it around and resizing it, very straightforward. I'm also gonna go ahead and add in a text box so that I can go ahead and give this a title. And I'm gonna say location overview. And we can see that at the minute the text is quite small, um, not very exciting. So I'm actually going to change the properties of the text. First thing, I'm going to make the text box as wide as the report itself. But what I'm going to do is when I have that selected, I'm going to click to center the data and then I can go ahead and change the size of the data. So I can make this uh, a lot bigger. So I can make this a lot bigger um, and I could change the font that's used as well if I wanted to uh, make it look a little bit different to the default. So now that I've got those two things on there, let's go back to this chart and focus on it a little bit. So again, this is the one that was added by default. Now I'm going to go ahead and let's make this a little bit wider. And let's make it a little bit bigger. We're not going to put too much on this report, just a couple of items so that you can see how you can get started with your own. So let's go ahead and we'll show 20 rows just, just as a um, starting point. And what this is showing us is the page titles, page titles of the website pages visited and then how many users have gone to that. I don't actually want that. So what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to change the dimension. So it's showing page title. I can do a couple of things. I could just remove that and then start again. Um, I could add a dimension from here and search or I can search from here. So I'm going to go with country. So I can just type it in. And country is showing there. I'm going to select that and just drag it over. So we can see there that it immediately shows that. And I can go ahead and I can just delete that page title. Then let's go ahead and do city. So again, we're going to drag that over. And then what I also want to do is I want to see the um, type of user. So whether it's a new or a returning visitor. So I'm going to go ahead and do user type. And I don't want it to show um, new users. I want to see, uh, 
scroll down a little bit uh the users metric instead rather than just new users so i see well how many are new vi visitors versus how many are returning visitors now at the minute this is um sorting looks like it's sorting by the number of users rather than what i wanted to do was sort by the country first of all and then by the city within each country so what i can do over on the right is i've got a um uh, sort and a secondary sort so first of all let's go ahead and let's sort by the country so now we can see it's sorting that way and then after that let's do a secondary sort by the city and I can change that and do ascending or descending however I want now what we can see there is we have the country of Vietnam and then we have the city here and we can see very clearly, well, there's 21 that are new visitors from that city and then we have seven that are returning visitors from that city. So it's giving us that information a little bit more clearly rather than just seeing a list sorted by the number of users. So now I can see that by country first, then city, then the type of user and how many users were actually on the website. I can then go ahead and I could resize the columns so that I see more information. Uh, I can also look at the style of the uh, table um, uh, as a whole. So I could change the table colors. So let's see. Uh, oh, that's a little bit bright. Um, and then what I can do is I can change then the label colors. Nope, wrong one. Uh, where we want there we go so then now we have a white text that's used as the header rather than the black so it stands out a little bit more then what we can do is we can change the odd and even rows so that uh, one of them stands out a little bit or they stand out between one another so there we we're seeing something a little bit different in terms of that sort of formatting of the table itself what we could also do is we could add um, some different charts. So we could put in um, bar chart, pie chart. Uh, we could also do a map. So one of the differences with using this compared with Google Analytics reporting is, yes, you could have geo maps within Google Analytics. But one thing here we've got is Google Maps. So we could actually go ahead and use a Google Map as opposed to a geo map. So if I do a Google map, let's just have a look at the difference there. So we're looking at a Google map there. And if I go ahead and add in a geo map, there we can see the geo maps so the difference between the two. So I actually really like the fact that you can put in a Google map um, with this. I think it looks um, pretty cool. It's something that users are, are used to. So let's stick with that one. Let's get rid of that. And let's move this around a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger. And then lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert a pie chart. And we will put this here. And again, we'll make it a little bit bigger. And this is automatically actually selected what I wanted. And that is showing me the number of users by country. So pretty straightforward. Now, if I want to go ahead and look at this, I can click view and I can see my report that I have created. Now, a couple of things to, uh, to note and keep in mind. I can see and scroll through all of the, the chart, or sorry, all of the table here when I'm viewing this within Google Data Studio. However, if I were to share this and I was to schedule this to be emailed to um, somebody on a regular basis, if they do not have access to the Google Data Studio for this specific um, set of analytics, they're not then going to be able to do the same thing. Um, they would just see basically a static PDF and they would see whatever is visible within this top. So I've got it where it would show the first 20. They would know that there were 3,297 rows, but they wouldn't be able to see them unless they had access to get in. So keep that in mind. Um, I can go ahead and go back to edit it um, and I can add in additional things. So another uh, tool that I could put on would be a date range. So I could set a date range that would allow if I go ahead and then view it. 
it would then allow the user again within the data studio to be able to set and say, all right, well, I want to see everything from the 1st of June through to the um, 23rd, sorry, yeah, to the 23rd. Um, and then I'm actually filtering and changing the date range on the report itself. Again, if you're using this and you're going to be emailing it out, then keep that in mind and you can set the date range within the report properties or the report settings instead where you're going to be able to then set the, um, the, the date range to be used there. So hopefully you've found this useful in terms of being able to start creating your own reports. You could do so much with it. One uh, sort of example that I can show you um, in terms of, there we go, in terms of some uh, different reports that I've created. So if I have a look here, here's a report that I've created that is for the UP podcast that I do. And I've essentially used the color scheme, the branding that we use for the podcast. And I've made it very, very clean and clear and simple to see where we're looking at events. So we've got an outbound link tracking event and we've got a podcast directory event event. So I'm basically using just those tables, but I've made it so it fits in with the style and the branding that we're using on the rest of the website. So that way, when Lisa and or I are looking at that, it's very on brand, even though it's just us. I think it's nice to have those reports that that fit and make sense. Um, and, and work with the brand that you have. So here's another one where we've basically taken the template that we looked at in this video um, from yesterday in the series. And again, I've just changed the color scheme. I've added a logo on there. I've updated it so that it fits and it's on brand with the UP podcast website. So hopefully that helps and you find it useful. You can go ahead and start creating your own custom reports using the Google Data Studio. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.